In 2006, Dos Equis Beer rolled out a new advertising campaign. It introduced a character known as the most interesting man in the world. His fortune cookies simply read, congratulations. Skinny dipping was his idea. He can slam a revolving door. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer Dos Equis. That ad campaign obviously caught fire. It ran for a decade and it changed the life of Jonathan Goldsmith, the actor who portrayed the most interesting man in the world. Jonathan Goldsmith lives in Vermont and was in Maine recently for a fundraiser for York Hospital's Hancock Family Fund for Healthy Aging. Now, not all actors have led interesting lives, but this one really has. I, I want to start with the, the main angle. You came here as a boy to summer camp? I did. I went to uh, Camp Androscog, and it was in Wayne, Maine. And I have many wonderful memories. I think I went there for two seasons, and then another camp called Cohut, which is also in Maine. I don't know where. <laughs> Turns out Camp Cohut is on Thompson Lake in Oxford. Been there since 1909. The camp sent us photos from around the time Jonathan Goldsmith might have attended. Who knows? He may be in one of them. I know when I was at camp, I remember we climbed, I think it was Mount Katahdin, is that it? Yes. And down the Allagash in canoes. So I, had a, I have great memories. You got the real main experience. I did, Poison Ivy. Oh yeah, I, I got it. A few years later, as a young man in New York City, Jonathan Goldsmith was adrift in life when a psychiatrist instructed him to study acting with a theater group. I went upstairs and there were a whole group of very bohemian looking people and some great looking girls and I felt very comfortable and he says, all right, we're going to do an improvisation. I said, great, I'll watch what they do and then I'll do it. And I had no idea what it was. And he says, you're first. <laughs> so I, they explained to me what it was. And I did it. And at the end of it, I got for the first time in my life applause. I said, this is it. At one point when you were studying acting in New York, or maybe when you were trying your hand at making a living uh, as a young actor, you worked with or studied with Robert Duvall and Dustin Hoffman? No. no. I worked on Broadway with Dustin Hoffman. I have a kind of a cute story about that. Dustin and I were the two youngest and two shortest in the entire cast. So we constantly just rubbed each other the wrong way. And we we're just irritating each other. And I finally jumped up and I said, Dustin, I said, the reason you don't like me is because I'm going to make it and you're not. And I walked out. <laughs> I regretted that many, many times. <laughs> well, not terribly long after that you decided to try your hand in Hollywood. I did. In movies and television. Uh, you didn't exactly set the industry on fire and before long you were driving a garbage truck. Well, I, I did that right off the bat. Yeah. I'd go to a, my auditions and spray myself in the back of the truck and change and go in for an audition. Was that pretty humbling? Yes. Very. It was. Goldsmith got parts, but they were small. He played an extra who Captain Kirk walked by in this episode of Star Trek. And he got shot by John Wayne in Wayne's last movie, The Shootist. But he never got the break he wanted. You had time to imagine that you had that lead in the series. It was up for lots of series and things with unknown people like Tom Selleck and Donna Mills and Robert Urich. And they went on and I didn't came close, but so it was a constant state of frustration. And I had dropped out of the business for a long time, for 10 years. I traveled all over the world. I built up a business. And every night when I was giving a presentation wherever I was, I kept wanting to return to the stage. Um, and nobody wanted me. And my break came on this commercial campaign, the Dos Equis. You were telling me about how when you first went to New York and were exposed really for the first time to acting, you had to do an improvisation scene. Correct. You got the job as the guy in the Dos Equis commercial because you improvised during the audition. Yeah. What did you do? You have to do an improvisation and end with the line, and that's how I arm wrestled Fidel Castro. Fine. Okay. I was going through financial problems. I drove my old truck down to Malibu, outside of LA. 
slept in the back of the truck. Didn't know if I had it, if I ever had it, could I make him laugh again? And when I got down there, I really got depressed. I looked and I said, oh my God, am I ever wrong for this? There were 500 handsome young Latinos actors. I says, I'm really in trouble. What am I gonna do? And I said, well, I need to have an accent. And uh, I channeled my friend Fernando Lamas. Do you remember him? I do. Okay, he was the great Latin lover, a raconteur, a Lothario. You know, have you noticed that the mysterious people are generally mysterious because they have nothing to say? <laughs> and I think it's a marvelous way out. You stay in a corner, mysterious, serious. People are very interesting men. Comedian Billy Crystal got a lot of laughs when he created a character based on Fernando Lamas. You Back to the audition, where the creative people had some questions for Jonathan Goldsmith. And they asked me, uh, tell me about yourself. What did you want to do when you were young? I said, well, uh, the first thing I wanted to do was to be a white hunter. But then I got interested in being an OBGYN, and they started to laugh, as you're nice <laughs> enough to do. And it went on from there, and I said, Jesus, they're laughing. And uh, I kept spinning this wild tale. I have no idea where it came from. I do have a fertile imagination. <laughs> the casting people auditioned hundreds of actors, the narrowed the list down to three, and then contacted Goldsmith's agent. And the next day, the casting director called Bob and said, they love Jonathan, but they just feel he's too old. And she paused and uh, she said, uh, how can the most interesting man in the world be young? You need time. He says, hang on, I'll get back to you. Called back and I got it. And that agent who helped Jonathan, Jonathan Goldsmith get the role of the most interesting man in the world, she is now married to him. I think you kind of have to. <laughs> she was there for the interview. She was delightful. <laughs> you have to marry her, yeah. He's... It's such a great story, though. He's a guy who was completely shunned by Hollywood, gets the job out of hundreds and hundreds of other actors, and it just transformed his life. And he's the oldest one there. I mean, I, of course he felt like he wasn't going to get it, yeah. but good for him for giving it his all. You know, he, he talked a lot about how actors, in his words, are the strongest people in the world because they deal constantly with rejection mm. and failure. And he'll talk about that a little bit more. Again, Jonathan Goldsmith was in Maine for a fundraiser for the York Hospital Hancock Family Fund for Healthy Aging. Next year's fundraiser is already scheduled for August 1st at the Cliff House in Ogunquit, where we interviewed Jonathan. Our thanks to the folks at the hospital who helped make the interview possible. And as Rob alluded to, we are going to have more of our conversation with Jonathan Goldsmith tomorrow. He's going to talk about how portraying the most interesting man in the world changed his life. And he's going to tell us about the projects he's got going on these days. That is tomorrow on 207.